what is going on with the heart project and how much is it responsible for the anomalies we're seeing in our weather i'm going to investigate in this episode of shed show talk i'm also going to take a look at the conspiracy theories that say that harp is responsible for the hurricanes that have devastated the caribbean and the eastern coast of the united states is it possible that a human made weapon could create such massive catastrophic weather systems? Well, this is a question from you, the viewers, and I'm going to take a look at this as well. And it's not just the hurricanes. Some believe HARP is responsible for the massive earthquake that hit Mexico City. How could that be? Well, I want to dig for information because I want to know if the conspiracy theories about HARP are actually true. And stay tuned because we've got photos, audio, video, and of course we've got some new theories about HARP at the end of this episode, followed by comments by viewers like you. So stay tuned and see if your name shows up in my video. My name is Beth and this is Shed Show Talk. Remember to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell as well. Cheers. HARP began with a congressional insertion uh, in the appropriations bill of, of fiscal year 1990. In essence, Congress directed the Defense Department to explore the potential for using um, the auroral regions um, for uh, improving communications and navigation and um, surveillance. Um, from there, uh, the assignment came that the Navy and the Air Force were to manage the program. It is uh, people from those two organizations that have worked together for the past seven years. Applications. Uh discussed in the patents included destroying missiles. Communications, control, and disruption were included. There were some other ideas both to possibly modify weather and finally uh, to lift a portion of the upper atmosphere further out into space where hopefully it would be able to deflect missile trajectories. So there you heard directly from the project manager for HARP, as well as a plasma physicist. And if you guys watched our video about crop circles, which is at Shet Show Talk, um, you'll hear that, that it's believed that plasma actually causes authentic crop circles. Something we'll definitely continue to investigate. So here you've got a plasma physicist and a project manager talking about how the American government and military set up the HARP project in order to investigate not only expanding our atmosphere for a missile system, but the ability to interrupt communications, uh, to impact weather, and all of these phenomena are actually associated to other natural events such as solar flares and bursts from the sun, which Paul did a video on. So when I looked closer at the science as to what HARP could do and has done and promises to do, one of the things I realized is communication is everything in the modern era. And if you don't have cell phone towers, people literally don't have the ability to communicate on the scale that would be required to run our basic systems. Or imagine this scenario. You have increasing nuclear tensions between the United States of America and North Korea and all the other countries in between. And somehow during negotiations or during discussions, someone utilizes a system such as HARP and cuts off communications. What would that do for diplomacy? What could that do for the very well-being of our planet? According to Disclose.tv, HARP is doing a four-day experiment to create uh, aurora borealis or northern lights in the sky in Alaska. And they call this uh, making the sky glow. And obviously HARP does use uh, radio type waves to create this. And they're saying in this article um, that through HARP that basically they're going to create kind of this illusion in the sky. And this has been furthering the theory that this is a weapon that is being tested on natural phenomena to control the world's weather. Anyhow, so you can see on the screen right now is a picture of what HARP looks like sort of in the daylight. This is one of the most popular uh, pictures of HARP. And according to Disclose.tv, what they said is the experiment is going to take place at 9.30 p.m. And they're going to create what they hope to believe uh, to be a fake aurora borealis in the sky. Is it something you know a lot about? If you do, please leave a comment because this is probably one of our most popular topics um, outside of UFOs for people to talk about in our comment section at uh, Shed Show Talk. 
So what we're going to take a look at next is whether or not HARP is somehow connected to the massive amount of hurricanes uh, such as Hurricane Harvey, Irma, Maria, and Jose. And some people have speculated that um, earthquakes and volcanic activity such as what we just saw in Mexico may also be tied to this phenomena. And some have gone as far as to say that this this example is somewhat like the recent story that WikiLeaks put out saying that the U.S. had lost control of its CIA arsenal of hacking tools. And uh, you can research that yourself. But is it possible that a weapon like HARP, which has been tested, may have created a ripple effect or a long-term effect that to this day we don't understand, but could have led and contributed to these mega hurricanes? Well, these are just some of your questions, some of my questions, and some things I'm going to investigate next. Eight thousand thunderstorms going on all over the earth at any given moment. There are millions of amperes of electricity uh, pouring to the earth from uh, lightning strikes, and HARP could create a trigger effect. According to government officials, HARP allows the military to modify and weaponize the weather by triggering earthquakes, floods, and hurricanes. In 1983, I did radio tomography with 30 watts looking for oil in the ground. I found 26 oil wells over a nine state area and 100% of the time was accurate which is 30 watts of power beaming straight into solid rock. HARP uses a billion watts beam straight into the ionosphere for experiments. What we used to do is beam radio waves into the ground and it would vibrate any strings that were present in the ground. We were able to identify each frequency. We accomplished this with just 30 watts of radio power. If you do this with a billion watts, the vibrations are so violent that the entire piano would shake. In fact, the whole house would shake. In fact, the vibrations could be so severe underground that could even cause an earthquake. Oh my goodness. There is the information I was looking for. This topographer has just confirmed that HARP had the ability to cause earthquakes. And we know earthquakes were one of the phenomena that people wanted to investigate it. And actually it leads to the main topic of this section, which are hurricanes. And so we've heard the evidence that there is a capacity within the HARP project to stimulate massive weather systems, potentially including hurricanes, and also to trigger earthquakes. So you tell me what you think is going on. Do you think HARP could cause an earthquake? What about a hurricane? Do you think that HARP might be on a new scale operating out of a secret location causing these types of events? Because regardless of what you may think HARP is or is not doing, this remains the question of the day. What happened when DARPA stopped the HARP project? Did they build a new one? Is there a bigger one somewhere else? Have other countries or intelligence agencies developed this technology for their own purposes? And here we have it. All roads lead back to Antarctica. The research that I started doing has indicated that it is believed HARP is primarily functioning in Antarctica. And is this a conspiracy or is it part of the ongoing conquest of humanity as it continues to colonize the last continent on Earth prior to colonizing other planets? And this is something I talked about in an Antarctica video I did when Shed Show was brand new. You can go back in our archives and take a look at it. But Antarctica continues to be the place where all paths lead to. So as I did a bit more digging into the rumors and um, perhaps conspiracies or facts, um, I'm still vetting those through. But everything about HARP in Antarctica comes back to the American-based station area of Antarctica, which is McMurdo Station. And McMurdo Station, uh, you can see it here on the map. It's the largest population, and it is owned by the Americans. Now, many of the largest nations, including the U.S., China, and others, have multiple stations on Antarctica. Uh, many of them have public disclosure for the science that they're conducting. But then there are also a lot of unknowns, and this is what makes Antarctica so fascinating. So what would HARP possibly be doing in Antarctica? 
as I continued down the wormhole or the rabbit hole or whatever whatever metaphor you want to use, and I continue to realize that there's something to harp and now there's something to Antarctica, two fascinating topics, I realized I needed to recruit the help of others to start to research this further. And as I started to scour the web for different sites that uh, may have information, I, I found this website. It's pamjonesforliberty.com and they have some articles and they have some links that you can take a look at. Now some would classify this under conspiracy and you can see it right there in the tags that, that some would say that this is conspiracy. But this is why I need you, the Shed Show Talkers, to help me do some research. Have you found any scientific uh, articles about harp in Antarctica or perhaps some of the basis as to why people are coming up with these theories? One of the things we have learned is that grassroots researchers are some of the most effective at finding information we can't find in main media sources. So if I look through this article here, uh, she, she does talk about um, the mysteries on um, Antarctica and, and apparently the pyramids in Antarctica. Now I will say I will question Antarctica pyramids uh, because some of the images that have been in very famous ufology videos are actually taken from sites in other locations in the world. So whenever I hear about pyramids in Antarctica, I'm still a bit skeptical uh, because I want to do more research. But if you have research about that and it's legitimate and proven, please post it in our comment section. Now you'll also see on the screen right now that there's a video by Dabu77 and he has an approximate 10 minute 20 second video talking about his evidence as to why he believes harp is active in Antarctica and it has to do with the frequencies of sound. But here's, whoop, I scrolled a bit too far here, uh, but this is what I wanted to point out. The Vault 7 WikiLeaks disclosure was uh, an absolute heyday for researchers and this site is alleging that there's information from the Clinta Podesta emails released by WikiLeaks that may indicate uh, that there's something going on in Antarctica. Now keep in mind when John Kerry arrived in Antarctica people recognized that something was happening there on a scale that had never happened before and my question for you the viewers is this do you believe that the likes of John Kerry visiting Antarctica is simply a coincidence. Many people believe that there is a lot going on in Antarctica that we're simply not hearing about. And you can actually see John Kerry here who visited Antarctica in 2016, late 2016, that this is a special site in Antarctica. And I put the map back up there for you guys to see. But this to me indicates a turning in world understanding and an acknowledgement that Antarctica is a significant factor to our future. And I believe the topic about Antarctica needs further investigation, which is why I'm inviting you to help me investigate Antarctica. You can email us your links at shedshowcontact at gmail.com. That's a new email address that we've set up for people who have contact stories. Uh, but in the meantime, I think it's time for me to wrap up this video with comments from viewers like you. And I've got some of my favorite comments about HARP coming up next.